All right, we've hinted at this brush before, but we're gonna get into it now. But first, let's hit the comma key. Let's go into the project tab. And we have a new female and male project, so you can open these up. It'll say, you can go uh, check out this guy's art station, Svetomir Georgiev. Uh, you can go check that out. And we'll just tap on our canvas and we'll get started. So the first thing we need to do is, I'm gonna turn off the floor and turn off perspective, because that's how I like to work. And then I'm also gonna go in here to geometry. And you're gonna see we have subdivision history on here. Here's level one all the way up to level three. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say delete lower, and that'll kind of free us up to do more geometry addition stuff to this subtool. Now we've already gone over a lot of features when we talked about mesh balloon and the two mesh extrude brushes, uh, but now we're on mesh project, but a lot of those same rules still apply. Now the difference between mesh extract and mesh project is again in this picker menu, instead of one Z, we have continuous Z on there. So you can hold down control and you can just mask where this is gonna go and it'll make a mesh. Now it's a very thick mesh, so hold down control, hit control Z, hold down control, drop that Z intensity down quite a bit. And you also notice we have a long lazy mouse stroke behind it. You can change that too. You can go in here to stroke lazy mouse and you can crank that lazy radius down. Before I do that actually, let's talk about one more thing. If we go in here to B, C and grab a B, C, H, the chisel brush here. If you remember from earlier versions of ZBrush, if you go through here and you use the chisel brush on this mesh, for example, let's hit Control D one more time just to give us a little bit more resolution. So you can go through here and you can choose different chisel brushes and it has lazy mouse turned on. However, uh, in the old days, if you held down Shift and did lazy mouse, it would actually stop before it got to the end, not anymore. So now it goes all the way to the end of your stroke. Just wanted to bring that up because as we're using, you know, holding down Control and mesh project and using our lasso stroke, the mesh is stopping exactly where those would be. Oh, I need to delete lower. The mesh is stopping exactly where you expect it to be. And actually I subdivided. Let's go to subdivision level one and delete higher. There we go, so now we're making a mask. And if you go into stroke and you hold down control, you can drop that lazy radius down and that'll reduce the amount of lag in that stroke or at least that red line tra trailing behind it. Now, just like the other brushes, if I go through here, and I just keep adding, it's gonna keep overlapping all these different meshes in here. Let's go ahead and hit Control Z. However, if I make a mesh, a mesh in here from the mask and I don't move my camera, I can hold down Control and then hold down Shift and then hold down Control and then Alt. And I can even go in here and change my stroke to like circle and then hold down Alt. Or I can change it to rectangle and even add a alpha and then hold down Alt. And also another thing too, if you hit the comma key and you go in here to the alpha pan or the alpha tab, there's hard surface alphas in here you can choose from. So let's go ahead and uh, you'll choose this other one here. Just double click it, it'll throw it straight into your alphas. Hit the comma key to go out of light box. And if you hold down control, oops, hold down control and then add that alpha. And now if you do alt, it'll go ahead and punch through or you can hold down control and don't hit the hold down alt and it'll add it to the existing mesh. Now, again, if you change your camera, you can go through here and you can add a mesh and then you can hold down control and then alt and it'll punch it out. And I'm not quite sure why it didn't. Let's see. There it goes, stuck to the mesh there. I don't know why, what was that was all about, but you can, again, you can add this to here and then you can go through here and it'll punch through. And it, you know, that actually gave us some pretty cool shapes there. Now, if we go over here to the subtool menu, we're just working on one subtool here. We're just kind of adding and subtracting meshes that are stuck to the subtool. If I want those, I can control drag to unmask everything. You'll see the body is all just one polygroup. So if we hold down control shift and tap the body, and then I go down here to split hidden. Now these are all on their uh, separate subtool. If you don't want those, you can go in here and delete, and then you're kind of back where you started. Now, just like the tail end of the last video, if you go up here and you click on Live Boolean, that's going to change the functionality of how these um, mesh uh, brushes work. So I'm gonna switch this back to the lasso stroke here and turn off my alpha. And again, we're gonna hold down control and drag on our object. And if that's all you do, the functionality doesn't change. Now, as soon as you start holding uh, down Alt and Shift is when Live Boolean is gonna do something slightly different. But let's go ahead and undo that and this time, when we draw something new, let's hold down Shift before we let go of Control, and it's going to put it into its own subtool. 
And the cool thing about with live Boolean is not only can it do that, you can hold down shift and it'll shoot it into its own subtool really quickly. You can also change your camera view and then you can continue the strokes. So I'm gonna hold down control and go to the back view, hold down control and go this direction and then hold down control. And again, I'm changing my camera view every single time. And when I control drag to unmask, you're gonna see it's all one seamless mesh. Now, if I turn on polyframe, you're gonna see it's actually overlapping meshes, but we can clean this up uh, later. I'll show you how to do that. But for now, you're able to change your camera view because we have live Boolean on and we're in a separate subtool. Now, if I hold down Control and then Alt, that'll do a subtractive mesh. Now, in this case, I don't necessarily want it to going into his base body here. I want to leave the base body alone because he's a human being and I don't want to cut into him with armor, right? So I'm going to go up here to this initial mesh, this additive. You know, these are the three different icons we have. So the first one is... You can add, you can subtract, and you can do a union between uh, two shapes for Booleans. However, you're also going to see this little arrow here. You can click that, and that's a start group. If you want more information on this in particular, uh, the basics of Booleans can be found in the ZBrush 4R8 What's New videos. But what that does is it allows us to say, hey, start here and ignore everything above it, and what's above it is the male body. So when we're using Booleans, it's only going to go through and cut shapes in here. Now, because we've added a new subtool, if I was to go through here and hold down Control and then Alt again, it's going to add another subtractive subtool. Well, there's no reason to do that. Let's go ahead and delete that. Since we already have a subtractive subtool that's set to subtractive, and you could change this if you want. You can make it additive, and that's what it's going to look like. Uh, you can change it to union, and that's the result you're going to get. But if we keep this subtractive, now we can switch to any other view, hold down Control, and then don't hold down Shift or Alt or anything like that. Just keep drawing. And now you can go through here, and you can start subtracting pieces out. Now, previously, you know, we were just, you know, changing this to the lasso stroke or the circle stroke, you know, and cutting in circles. You can also use this curve stroke. And this is a cool one because you can hold down control and it's going to maintain a straight line no matter what. So I can go through here and if you know anything about the curve, you can tap Alt once and that'll give you a Bezier curve. And then you can Alt tap twice and that'll give you a sharp curve. So you can go sharp curve by Alt tapping twice. So all sharp through here and then Bezier curve and then a sharp curve. You can get very, very precise lines. So again, we're on that subtractive mesh. We're gonna Alt tap a couple times and then go ahead and close that up and that'll give us our subtractive mesh. Now you can do the same thing for additive. Now so if I hold down control and I say start drawing this line and then tap a couple times here we'll make another shape inside of here and now this time I'm gonna hold down shift that's gonna give me a brand new subtool out here and again I can change the stroke up let's change it to a circle and because this is additive I can go down here and I can add to this. I don't have to hold down shift. I'm just going to keep adding it to this one subtool here. I can add this here. I can switch this rectangle stroke out. I can go and grab another alpha out of our light box by hitting the comma key. Just double tap any of these alphas here. Hold down control, add the alpha. Let's drag it on here. And there you go. Now, let's say you wanted to, you know, Put this as a handle on here and it's going to be like oh it takes into account you know all the subtools well if you hold down control and you switch your picker to once z it's going to take the depth of that one and then it's going to leave the rest of them alone it's not going to continuously update the surface it's just going to do it once where you first click and then you have this separate shape now on this one if we want to pop this into its own subtool here because it's you know on top of this one let's go down here to split mask points we can select this one here we can hit W, we can scale this in a little bit. Let's go ahead and turn on L sim so it uses its local axis symmetry here. And if you want to reset this pivot, you can also hold down Alt and just tap on there. There we go. So now he's got little knobs that you can turn. And if you want to disregard everything else, we can go back here to the mail, hold down Shift, turn off the eyeball, that'll turn everything else off. And now I can just drop some straps underneath here. Let's control drag to unmask everything. Control shift tap the body. And then again, go back here to split hidden. Hold down shift, turn the eyeballs back on. And now we have straps underneath everything that disregarded the other visible subtools. Now we alluded to this functionality when we were doing the 
Qubit B E, these extrude profile brushes, uh, especially especially the uh, extrude profile two brushes here. So for this one, let's Alt tap this subtool because we want to work on this one. I'm going to go in here. You know what? We'll just use this brush alpha. I'm going to grab this brush alpha again and hold down Alt so we can do a subtractive mesh here. And let's say I want to add an extruded profile around this. Well, let's go ahead and I'm going to duplicate this off so we can see it. I'm going to go into solo mode. Now, if I turn on polyframe and let's go ahead and switch this out to skin shader 4 so you can see it better, you're going to see we have polygroup borders that we can use. And if we hold down control shift and isolate, we have open borders we can use as well. I'm going to control shift click this pink one, control shift drag, and now we have a border along here. Let's do control shift S to shrink. And now we just have this blue open border. So I'm going to go in here to my stroke menu. Let's drag this over here to the left, that little white dot, and then go down here. Let's hold down shift and open up all these curve functions and then or all these curve menus. And then underneath curve functions, we're going to say open border, turn off the other two, hit frame mesh. And that's going to put a curve. If we zoom in, there's a curve going right around this mesh border. So let's go in here to B E extrude profile two. We can choose any one of these. Let's go ahead and just choose one and we'll tap to update this curve. It's a little bit big, so let's make our brush size a little smaller. And then again, tap to update that curve here. And it is giving me overlapping geometry. Temporarily, I'm going to turn off X symmetry. And that way, it's just going to give me one solid piece around here. So if I go into solo mode here and turn off polyframe, you're going to see on this duplicated mesh, we framed it, but I don't, I already have a subtractive mesh. I was just using this geometry as a placeholder. So I'm actually going to go down here to visibility hide point and then control shift drag to invert that. And now I have an extruded profile of geometry around that border. Let's go ahead and switch back to our uh, startup material or in your guys' case, matcap gray. So let's go ahead and tap away from our object to delete that curve. And again, if you want way more in-depth information on how curves work, go back to the very first couple of videos in this playlist here. And in fact, we don't even need that placeholder geometry anymore. So let's go up here to Geometry, Modify Topology. And again, if we hold down Control, Shift, and Drag, that'll invert it. So what we're not seeing is this placeholder geo we used. So we hold down Control, Shift, and Drag, that'll invert that visibility. I'm just going to go down here to Delete Hidden, so because we, we don't see it anymore. Now I can delete what we don't see. So now we have a new additive mesh framing that open hole. So if I turn this one off and then click this one, you're going to see there's the open hole we had. And now we have an additive framed mesh. But we can also choose this mesh here and choose that to be subtractive. And this is a live Boolean. So if I turn on our polyframe here, you're going to see it's not really interacting in any meaningful way. But if we hit W, and we grab this and we pull it back a little bit, you're going to see now that geometry is pushing in. If I turn on polyframe, you're going to actually see all we're doing is moving this geometry in so it's interacting with the underlying mesh. So you can push this in and now we're getting an interesting bevel around that open uh, circle. And in fact, you can just use your move brush if you want to. You can go through here and just move things around. You can even go down here to your deformation menu, go down here to inflate you can thicken it up or thin it out if you want to. And there you go. So you can add a lot of visual interest. You can use Booleans. You can use mesh uh, extractions and mesh projections to go through and make very, very quick armor. Now, uh, I did mention Z Remesher before, so let's talk about that a little bit. I'm going to go to the very top subtool here, and I'm going to hit Delete. And just keep hitting Delete till we're back to our original person here. Now, if you do want to make the zero mesh process a little bit easier, I think, you can remove the bevel and you can always add that in later. So we hold down control, go down here to mesh mask modifiers, drop that bevel down to zero. You can start your shape. So again, hold down control and then shift to add in a new subtool and then go through here and control and just kind of add shapes to this. And then if we turn off the body, you're going to see by removing the bevel, we've really simplified this. And in fact, you can simplify it even more. Let's hit W. Let's go uh, tap X to go out of X symmetry. Hold down Control Shift and delete that half. So again, geometry, modify topology, delete hidden. It's simple enough to where we can go through here and again, use our Dynamesh trick. 
turn the resolution up, turn blur down, make it all one solid mesh. And so we can see this a little bit better. Let's go up here to our skin shader four. I'm gonna isolate again all these top poly groups here, hit control W, control shift tap, and then control shift tap all these down here, control shift drag to invert, grab those two, control shift drag again, control W. So we have a top, bottom, and middle groups here. Again, we'll turn off lines so you can see that a little bit better. And we don't even need it that high resolution. We'll drop the resolution down, control drag to redyne a mesh. Under zero mesher, say keep groups, smooth groups up to one, target polygon count of whatever you want. Let's say maybe 10K ish. Depth size down to zero, hit zero mesh. There we go. Let's go ahead and turn on line. Did a pre pretty decent job. If you want to, you can actually smooth these lines out too. Remember, you can always go down here to deformation, polish by features. And as you crank uh, that up, it's gonna use your poly groups as a feature. And then you can go back here to Ziri Mesher. This one, we don't need to smooth the groups anymore. So I'm gonna keep my groups, but smooth groups down to zero. And you know what, let's just say half and Ziri Mesh again. And there we go. We can keep doing Ziri Mesh half if you want. I'll keep reducing this lower and lower. But now we have a very usable mesh here. Now, if we want to add our bevels back in, we can hold down Control Shift. I'm going to isolate this top one. Control Shift drag. Grab the bottom one. Hit Control W. So all of the middle polygons are all one group. Control Shift tap to bring everything else back. And now, because we lost our bevels or we didn't, we wanted to add them later. Let's say we can go in here to the crease menu. And we're going to, again, hold down control, grab the bevel width, and then you can just manually go through here and add a bevel in between all of your poly groups. Now, at that point, you can go through here. You can say crease PG, which will add a crease through all your poly groups. And in fact, you can just run a crease tolerance at 45. Just hit crease as well. And then you can go up here to geometry, dynamic subdivision, turn on dynamic. And now you're going to see you'll get a mesh like this. Now, of course, if you didn't want to do, um, you can say uncrease all, then just say crease PG. That'll crease your poly groups here. So again, a much lighter weight, more usable mesh that's all one piece. But again, all from that original concept mesh that we did.